What's up you guys, Mr. Enriquez here, and today we're doing another video, this one, on evolution by natural selection. So, let's get after it. Alright, what is evolution? You guys have probably heard people say, oh, things evolve, things change, right? You adapt. But, where does this idea come from, right? So evolution actually started back in the 1800s with this guy named Charles Darwin. He's this famous guy, you've probably seen a photo of him, he's got really... Uh, really old guy with white hair, really big, bushy white beard. But funny thing is, he started thinking of the idea of evolution when he was 23 years old. What? That's right, 23. That's not much older than many of you guys. So 23 years old, he started thinking about this when he went on this voyage on the HMS Beagle, which was this naval vessel from England, and went all around the world, traveled to all these different countries, and he was a naturalist on board, the scientist, and he was taking a look at all the different organisms he observed when he was going to places all around the world, right? And he thought to himself, what the heck? Why are there so many animals that are different from each other? There's animals here that are not uh, on other countries, not other places of the world. Like, what's causing this change? Why are there all this biodiversity, right? And that's when he came up with the idea of evolution by natural selection. So we're going to talk about natural selection in a minute. That explains how evolution actually works. And he published a book in 1959 when he got a little bit older called The Origin of Species, right? How origin, uh, species originated. So if you think about it, evolution kind of explains how if you go on the... just family tree of all living things on this planet. You go humans, birds, plants, animals, whatever, right? And you follow that family tree back far enough, we all came from the same common ancestor. What? Crazy. Yes, that's right. We all came from the same place. And given enough millions and millions of hundreds of thousands of billions of years, a lot of time period passed, there's changes. We evolved, we changed, we diverted, there's speciation, right? So how did that happen? It happened by evolution, by natural selection. So let's talk about what is evolution? Evolution is the theory or the idea that populations change over time, right? So the idea that, whoa, get off, that populations change over time. The idea that populations change over time, right? Pretty crazy, pretty phenomenal that we all came from the same ancient, ancient, ancient micro microbial Bacteria that I think people think came from hydrothermal vents and from given enough time that one single celled organism turned into all the biodiversity that we see today, right? That's our great, 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 grandparent. What? That's crazy. All right. So evolution, the idea that populations change over time. Now, a very important thing you guys need to know is that evolution talks about populations, not individuals. Populations evolve, not individuals. So I'm going to write that down as a key star and put a star because that's so important. Populations... evolve, not individuals. Not individuals, right? Because Charles Darwin wasn't the only guy thinking about this idea of evolution. Another scientist named Lamarck actually thought of evolution as well, but he thought that individuals changed through a lifetime and evolved during their lifetime. What a joker. It's not how it works. Come on. So evolution is actually population change over, over time. Um, Populations change over time. So that's why Darwin's famous because he came up with the idea of natural selection. So let's talk about that. Natural selection Natural selection is the how. Natural selection explains how evolution occurs, right? It's the mechanism that drives it, pushes everything forward and has the speciation occurred, right? So evolution explains how Evolution occurs. Oop, occurs. So natural selection is the how, explains how evolution occurs. Evolution is the idea that populations change over time, right? So we're going to do an example. Check this out. Whoa! That was pretty cool. All right. So we're going to do a really famous example. This is the example of the peppered moth in England. So what I'm drawing here, do, 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 do. These are moths, not butterflies. Don't make fun of my drawings, I'm trying the best I can. Here we go. So we have a couple moths here. So there was a population of peppered moths in England around the 1800s. Um, some were dark in coloration, right? Some were really dark wings, and some had light wings. And the funny thing was that actually, like almost 98% of the population had light wings, right? They were light in color, which is pretty fun, pretty cool, interesting, right? But then, in 1850 was when the start of the Industrial Revolution happened in England. So if you guys remember what the Industrial Revolution was, around the 1850s-ish, right, ish, 
That's when factories started to get produced. They produced a lot of burning those fossil fuels and put a lot of soot in, in, into the atmosphere, right? We talked about this in a carbon cycle, taking those fossil fuels from the lithosphere and putting all that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, right? So the 1850s is kind of when it really started happening big time in England. I can use black here, right? Because these factories produced a lot of smoke, produced a lot of soot, right? It started to fill up the air, it started to stain the trees and the buildings and everything, all the places where these moths lived, right? All the things that they lived on started to turn black. And something the scientists noticed, which was kind of crazy, was that a couple years later, or a handful of years later, the pepper moth population began to change. They're like, what the heck? What is going on here, right? Instead of having all these light-colored moths, they started to notice that there were way more of these dark-colored moths, right? Way more of them. And they saw not very many light-colored moths anymore. It switched. So originally, there was like 98% were light-colored. Then after the Industrial Revolution, like 98% were dark-colored. It's flipped. It was crazy. They're like, what the heck is going on here? What happened to these moths? Natural selection happened to these moths. That's right. Yes, you're so smart. Natural selection happened. That's what natural selection is in a nutshell is there's variation within a population, which means differences, right? There's differences in these moths. There's dark colored and light colored moths. And the light colored were actually better suited for this environment because, something I forgot to mention, were these moths are eaten by a predator. That predator is birds. So this is my dry and bird. Whoop! Right, there's my bird. That bird eats these moths, right? And what happened was these light colored moths were super easy to camouflage. And they weren't seen by these. So these dark colored moths really stood out and this bird was like, you know what, I'm gonna eat you guys. But then after this industrial revolution in the 1850s, everything changed because the environment changed. Everything got stained black, all the trees were now black. So that means, check out, these dark colored moths were like, heck yeah, now we're camouflaged and these birds can't see us anymore. So the birds are like, you know what, I don't really care, I'm just gonna eat the light colored moths. And now we see there's barely any light colored moths anymore, right? Because these guys are now eating the light colored ones. So what natural selection is, is when there's variation, there's differences, it leads to an adaptation, which means a trait that's beneficial for your environment, remember, it always depends on the environment, it helps you survive and then reproduce and pass on your genes. You give enough time over generations, over generations, over generations, right? The population begins to change, right? And that's evolution by natural selection. So let's go back. So natural selection explains how evolution occurs. So that's what I just showed you on that backside with the pepper moths. Now we're going to talk about the four key principles that need to be present for um, natural selection to actually happen to occur, right? So the first one we're going to talk about is bum, 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 variation. Variation? What the heck is variation? Variation is differences, right? It's like diversity. Not all humans are the same. Not all rhinos are the same. Not all tigers have the same stripe pattern. You know, not all plants are the same. There's differences. There's variation within populations, right? And that's really important. So variation is the differences Difference, so I'm abbreviating difference. The difference in genetic makeup of a population, right? The difference in genetic makeup of a population. Remember, when I'm talking about genetic makeup, I'm talking about DNA, I'm talking about alleles. Remember from your heredity unit and those Punnett squares, like big B, little b, all those things, that's DNA. There's differences, there's variation within the DNA. But something super important to notice is, okay, we talked about uh, difference in genetic makeup, but it has to show up in your phenotype. Remember, your physical appearance it has to either show up physically or be a uh, behavior that natural selection can actually select for or against, right? If that behavior helps you survive or if that phenotype, phenotypic trait helps you survive, it's going to be a good thing for natural selection. So differences in genetic makeup, that's a variation, but must be present in, as a phenotype, must show up in phenotype must show up in your phenotype, right? It's got to show up so natural selection actually occur. If you guys, and there's a couple different causes of variation, right? There's gene flow, there's um, um, genetic drift, all these different things. But what we're really going to focus on today is mutations. So mutations cause variation. So variations are caused by mutations whoa caused by mutations right so remember a mutation 
is when there's a mistake in the copying of your DNA, usually during cell division, right? When those base pairs don't line up exactly, those A, T, C, and Gs are getting mixed up, that causes a mutation. And they can be silent. Remember, we learned about this. Silent mutations don't necessarily cause in your, the change in your phenotype because the same amino acids, the same proteins are made, right? Nothing's gonna happen to you. You're gonna live on and not even know something's different, right? But if a mutation occurs, it causes a big change, big enough to change your phenotype or, or your behavior or something, right? Natural selection can actually work on that, right? So mutations, right, need to show up in the phenotype. Variation is the differences usually caused by mutations, right? Some people are taller, some people are shorter, some people are faster, some people are slower. All these different things are variation within a population. The variation in our moth example was the light color and the dark color, right? That was the differences, right? So that's the first thing. Variation must be present within a population. Let's talk number two. Number two is called adaptation. So you've probably heard of this. I can do some more racing. You've probably heard of adaptations before, but let's go over what it means in an evolutionary um, lens, or what that means when it comes time for evolution. So number two is adaptation. So let's write that down. Number two. Right? For natural selection to occur, we need ad, oops, ad, adaptations. Adaptations. Right? You need an adaptation. So number two comes after variation because variations are differences, but then what an adaptation is, it's that beneficial, it's the good. It's the good variation that helps you survive better than others in your environment, and that means you can reproduce, right? And pass on those genes. Because more important than surviving, is reproducing and passing on those genes to the next generation so the population as a whole can evolve. Remember, populations evolve, not individuals, all right? So an adaptation is a beneficial um, variation, beneficial variation for a specific environment. Right? So beneficial variation for a specific environment. Now this part's important, specific environment. So if you remember, we talked about those moths, light color and dark, dark color. The dark color was a good adaptation after the Industrial Revolution, right? Because it helped them blend and camouflage. They're like, Whew. right? No one can see us, we're not getting eaten, we're surviving, we're passing on our genes. That's awesome, that was the adaptation, right? But if that environment had stayed the same and there was no Industrial Revolution, there's nothing getting put in the air, nothing staying in these trees, right? That environment is different, so that adaptation would not be being dark anymore. It'd be that light color, because the light color would blend in if there's no industrial revolution. So adaptations really depend on the environment that the organisms or the population live in, right? So adaptations, beneficial variation, a beneficial variation for a specific environment. And another key term, we're going to know number three here, is that adaptations help uh, your biological help uh, determine your biological fitness. So fitness, maybe you've heard of survival, fitness, survival of the fittest, right? Only the strong survive, right? They talk about the stuff in sports and competition all the time, but fitness in a biological sense is how well an individual is able to survive and reproduce compared to others, right? Within a species. So your adaptation that you have actually helps determine how fit you are. The higher your fitness, the better you survive, the more important to survive, pass on your genes. The lower your fitness, you're not going to make it, man. You're dead. You're dead. Right? And that means if you're dead, your genes die with you and your population moves on. Sorry, guys. All right, so fitness. Um, how well an individual can survive. And what's more important than surviving? That's right. Reproduce compared to others. to others, right? How well an individual can survive and reproduce compared to others, right? Because you want to survive, that's awesome, but then you want to pass on your genes. So that's the next step, right? Pass on your genes so that over long periods of time, at least number four, which I'm gonna do in another color, let's go red because I'm just sick of blue. Whew, here we go. So variation, differences, leads to an adaptation, the variation that's good for that environment. And that affects your fitness, how well you can survive and reproduce, which all leads to descent with modification. Descent with modification. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, descent with modification. This is pretty much another way of just saying evolution, right? So you got variation, it's got differences. 
leads to an adaptation like a dark color that helps after the Industrial Revolution. That makes those moths better able to survive because they're not getting eaten by those birds because they can blend in. And that means they're going to reproduce because there's nothing eating them, pass it on their genes, which leads to this end with modification, which leads to the population, given enough time, changing and just having more of the individuals, uh, having higher percentage of individuals with a beneficial adaptation. So what the descent with modification is, is given enough time, right, the population... changes having an increase, right, increase, that means go up, increase, a population changes having an increase in the number of individuals with the beneficial Adaptation. Boom. Right? So, descent with modification. A population change is having an increase in the number of individuals with a beneficial adaptation. Right? So, we're talking about the moths. We had a bunch of light colored moths. The environment changed. Given enough time, their adaptation being dark colored was a good adaptation. Right? They had a higher fitness, which means given enough time, given enough years, given enough generations, there's going to have that population of moths is going to be have a lot more dark colored moths than light colored moths, right? Because it's good for that environment, right? That's descent with modification. A population change is having an increase in the number of individuals with a beneficial adaptation. So that's evolution by natural selection in a crash course. But this all sounds like it's right, but how do we know it's right? So that's the next video. Next, we're going to talk about, don't take my word for it. We got to know the evidence. What's the evidence for evolution? How do we know this thing is true? How do we know it's right? Right? We gotta look at the fossil record. We gotta look at biogeography. We gotta look at molecular biology. We'll look at DNA. We gotta look at sequences. What are similar differences in DNA between species? Right? Um, hopefully this was helpful. Anyways, guys, evolution by natural selection. Talk to you next time. Keep it up.